So starting from today, um, we're going to learn about forming and shaping processes and it, the equipments are used during these manufacturing techniques. So what are these um, forming and shaping techniques? One of them is rolling and today we're going to learn about rolling and there is also forging, extrusion, sheet metal forming, powder metal forming processes. So all of these we're going to see starting from today. Today is rolling and then in the further chapters we're going to learn about other types of uh, forming and shaping processes. Now we are seeing a car and also we are seeing what type of forming techniques are used in each part each part of this car so for example for the car body cold rolled sheet metal so that means it has been rolled to shape it there are other techniques we are seeing here powder metal filler filters made by powder metallurgy basically and there are deep drown uh, oil pen this is like the sheet metal forming process and there are other types of techniques we are seeing here forging so all of these techniques are used to shape different parts of a car This table is a general summary of the techniques, the forming and shaping processing techniques we will be learning about, starting from rolling, forging, extrusion, drawing, sheet metal forming, powder metallurgy, and processing of plastics and composites, and the processing and shaping forming of ceramics. So all of these we will learn and rolling today we're going to start learning about two types flat and shape rolling processes. And in the further chapters we're going to see the other techniques and you can read through the characteristics of each technique that we will be learning today starting from today. So in this chapter, we're going to learn about rolling of metals, which is the most important metal forming operation. And we will begin with flat rolling process and we're going to do mathematical analysis of it. Like what are the forces, how forces are affecting the process, what is the power required, how we can change the power or can we reduce the power. And what are the defects that we observed uh, in the rolled products? After those uh, descriptions of flat rolling, we're going to look at shape rolling process. And then we're going to look at special rolling processes, such as ring rolling, cross rolling, thread rolling. And we're going to end with a description of the rolling mills and how the roll rolls sometimes arrange to make specific products. So I, I'm going to again mention I'm sending you a lot of videos since I cannot show, show you those videos here. Please after learning each technique and watch the video of that processing technique. Okay, because this way it will give you a visual idea what, of what we are talking about and it will help you to understand. So what type of products we make with rolling process? Plates for ships, bridges, structures, large machine, sheet metal for car bodies, aircraft bodies, appliances, containers, foil for packaging, I-beams, railroad rails, uh, seamless pipe and tubing, bolts, screws, threaded components what is rolling then basically it is the process of reducing the thickness and changing the cross-section of a long work piece 
by compressive forces applied through a set of rolls. And this technique accounts for 90% of all metal produced by metalworking processes. This technique is suitable for ferrous and various non-ferrous metals and their alloys. It is also possible to roll uh, other materials other than metals. So rolling is first uh, carried out at elevated temperatures and we're gonna see we call this hot rolling before we actually do the cold rolling and rolling at room temperature. So what type of what is it that we are rolling? We can roll plates and sheets. And what is the different? Uh, that's the thickness is the different. So when we talk about plates, they have a thickness greater than six millimeter. And when we talk about sheets, this is when we have a thickness that is less than six millimeter thick. Uh, plates and sheets they have different application areas so when we roll plates usually uh, application areas are structural applications boilers bridges nuclear vessels t more thick uh, thick metals that are required for these applications so sh when it comes to sheets when we roll them we use them in applications such as automobile and aircraft bodies, kitchen and office equipment. For example, um, Boeing 747, the skin thickness is 1.8 millimeter. And for aluminum alloys, alum aluminum cans, for example, it is 0.28 millimeter. So, these are called sheets, right? They are they have thickness lower than six millimeter. Rolling process is divided into two categories. The first one is flat rolling, and the other one is shape rolling. And then let's look at flat rolling first. This is a summary of uh, things that we're going to learn, some uh, flat rolling and shape rolling processes are being shown. So there will be a slab, billet and bloom that is coming from continuous casting or these are the uh, from the ingots. And these will be shaped into plates and sheets and some uh, structural I-beam shapes or they can be made uh, tubes and wires. So depending on what type of uh, shape you start with, you will end up with a corresponding shape. So for example, if you start with a billet, you will end up uh, with a usually tubes, uh, rods. So if you start with a slab, you will end up with a plate. And if you start with a bloom, th those are used for shaping them into I-beams. So we're going to see those, what are these, and what are these processes that are being shown here individually. So a metal strip with a thickness of H naught enters the roll gap and is reduced to a thickness of HF. So if we look at here, we are seeing that the strip, which is our part that we are uh, trying to shape, entering the rolls 
with a thickness of H naught and exiting with a thickness of HF. Each rollers are powered by a shaft and a motor. Velocity of the roll surface is constant. So that is shown with V the subscript R. So if we take a look at it, initial entering velocity is V naught. V naught is the entering velocity of the strip and the exiting velocity is V F. The velocity of the rolls is VR here. The velocity of the strip it increases from uh, V naught uh, to VF as it moves through the roll gap, and it is the highest at the exit when it it is the value of VF that is the highest at the exit. So that means the metal is accelerated in the roll gap. So as you can see, the workpiece has an entrance speed of V naught, exit speed of VF, and the rolls have a speed of VR. So um, there will be a relative sliding between the roller and the strip. Because of the existence of friction forces. So at a point we call a neutral point, there will be no slip. Meaning that the velocity of the strip is the same as that of the roll. So that means at that point, the speed of the workpiece, the strip, will be equal to VR. But on the left hand side of that point, roll moves faster than the strip. So the roll moves faster than the strip. This is because it wants to, with the aid of friction, okay, it wants to catch the uh, workpiece and roll it under it, right? So it is like friction is helping the motion. So when you pass the no slip point where the uh, where the velocity of the workpiece is also equal to V R, so on the right hand side of that neutral point. The strip moves faster than the roll. There the friction is trying to break the motion. So you can see the direction of the frictional forces acting on the strip. So the first one is aiding, right, this direction, helping the motion. The other one is actually trying to break that motion. But at the end, the net frictional force must be in the direction of motion. So it can actually go through uh, in between the rolls. So friction is something that is necessary, as we can see here. It Because it pull, pulls the material into the uh, roll gap, as I said. But we need to be careful because high friction means increasing the forces and power requirements to overcome the friction. And this could also damage uh, the rolled surface. So therefore, um, a compromise is therefore made using uh, lubricants that can lead to low friction or you can control the levels of friction and prevent the damage that is uh, the, due to the increased frictional forces.
draft is defined as the difference between the initial and the final strip thickness. So there is a maximum limit that where you can achieve uh, in terms of draft. So you don't want to go to a large draft because then it can cause rolls to slip. So the maximum draft is a function of uh, the R. The R is the ra roll radius and mu. Mu is the coefficient of friction. Here is the R, the roll radius, and mu is the friction coefficient. So what does this equation tell you? It tells you that higher the friction and larger the roll radius, the greater the maximum draft uh, possible. Rolls uh, apply uh, pressure on the flat strip or force. We call it roll force, with the shown with F. So this is uh, perpendicular to the plane of the strip. The roll force in flat rolling is expressed through this equation given here. L is the length of contact. And sigma average is the average true stress of the strip. And W is the width of the strip. So the forces, as you can see, depends on the dimensions of the material, it, its strength and the contact length. So this L, you can see the width is the, uh, here width is the, the shown with W width of the strip and then the L is you can see here the contact length or this is the same as here contact in between the rolls and the strip okay so this length is uh, approximated to which is a uh, square root of R times Delta H so Delta H is the draft right the difference between original uh, and final thicknesses so that means that contact length depends on the draft and R is the roll radius so the contact length will depend on R and will depend on the draft that also means right if you increase R or Delta H this was the equation we learned right frictional forces friction coefficient of friction all will increase the L. L will increase the force that is necessary to do the rolling. And then the power. What is the power equation? It is given here. And it depends on the force length uh, L and, and then the N. N is number of uh, revolutions. Uh, per minute so that means if the forces are increased that means you need to uh, apply more power and of course the uh, amount of power you are providing is gonna affect the economics of the rolling process Roll forces uh, can cause deflection and flattening of the rolls. Think about a rubber tire. 
and he, how it gets flattened. And such changes, of course, will affect the rolling process and its ability to produce a uniform thickness in the rolled sheet. So, how can we minimize roll forces? We can reduce friction uh, at the interface of the roll and the workpiece. We can use small uh, diameter rolls, which will reduce the contact area. And remember, if L is reduced, you are reducing the force and therefore power. And you can do smaller reductions per pass, other than trying to achieve a, a bigger, a big draft. You can do small reductions per pass. This will, of course, reduce the contact area again. Why? Because you are reducing delta H. Rolling also can be done at elevated temperatures. This will reduce the strength of the material, therefore it will require you to apply less forces. We're gonna see later in more detail, but here we are given illustration of various roll arrangements. And in the first image A, we are seeing two high mill. This is used for thick but short, short work pieces. And there is also three high mill with an elevator for multiple passes. And here the material movement through the rolls is reversed after each pass, as you can see. So those type of arrangements are done to reduce the forces, reduce the contact area uh, between the uh, working piece and then the rolls. So there is the, in, in the image C, we are seeing four high rolling mill. Here the uh, small rolls are in contact with the material and therefore it lowers the roll forces. And then we are seeing image D, tandem rolling with three stands. In tandem rolling it's like there is a number of stands and the strip is passed th passing through a number of stands in one pass. So with each tick each uh, passing the thickness is reduced. There are other types of arrangements, like we are seeing uh, on image E and F, uh, like planetary and mill and cluster mill. All are done basically just to achieve the reduction of the applied forces and therefore the usage of power. So, um, the roll forces, they tend to elastically bend the rolls during rolling. And this can be Im seen in this image, right? The, those are the rolls that are bended when the strip is passing through. Normally, they are uh, straight, but when the strip is passing through, the rolls are bending. Okay, so roll forces uh, bend the rolls during rolling. Therefore, what we need is, if we want to choose a material in the making of the roll, 
then we want high elastic modulus. This will uh, give us smaller roll deflection. Okay. Now, due to um, uh, this deflection, the rolled strip is now has a thicker, thicker its its center than its edges, and this is known as crown. And we can see here. I'm sorry, here we can see uh, that the, um, it's thicker at the center, right? Thicker at the center. And this is known as crown. What can you do to avoid this problem? You can grind the roller so that the center diameter is actually larger than the edge diameter. And this is known as giving the roller uh, camber. Uh, this will help us as the rolls bend during the process. The strip being rolled will have a constant thickness along its width. And we can see this in the other image. As you can see, these regions are thicker compared to the edge diameters. So this will help us to get a uniform thickness throughout the strip. Okay. We also talked about flattening the, of the rolls, and this is not something we want because it will increase the contact area, therefore increase the roll forces. Another topic here is spreading. What is spreading? It is the increased in the width of the strip during rolling. So let's see where is the image. Okay. So here is the side view, right? Uh, how we do the flat rolling. But then if you look from above, the top view, as you change the lower the cro lower the uh, thickness you are actually increasing the width because at the end the volume has to stay the same so it was initially v not the width became the um, I'm sorry w not and then it became wf at the exit but this is getting smaller this is getting bigger okay then thickness is getting smaller but the width is getting bigger so this is called spreading so if your strip has high width to thickness ratio uh, the width of the strip uh, re remains uh, constant or changes very low however if you have uh, smaller ratios such as if you have a bar with a square cross section then its width increases significantly as it passes through the rolls spreading can be prevented if you can use um, vertical rolls so that's like a physical barrier to spreading. So if you are using rolls here, right? But why not use uh, in the direction, in the plane of the uh, width? So you can also do that. So this will limit physically the spreading. So we talked about in flat rolling practice, the initial step is hot rolling. So hot rolling is done above recrystallization temperature of the metal. Here the idea is you have an ingot that has a cast structure which is coarse and it has non-uniform grains. And you don't want to start the rolling 
uh, which some with some uh, the materials that has a non-uniform grains. So therefore, the first is done hot rolling at above recrystallization temperature, which will give us material with finer grains and enhanced properties like strength, hardness, ductility. So this all results because of these uh, grain boundaries are recrystallizing, basically forming fine grains. And after this, basically you go ahead and do the cold rolling after this stage. So some of the recrystallization temperatures we are seeing for aluminum and steel. And you can see you also need to apply this uh, temperatures to your processing technique. So uh, the products uh, we get after this hot rolling operation. We call them blue, slab and billet. Remember the first figure I showed you. Uh, we had uh, materials to start with the cold working uh, with bloom, slab and billet. What are the differences in between those uh, hot rolling uh, products? So when we say bloom, this has a square cross section. And at least uh, a, a dimension is about 150 millimeter on the side. When we talk about slab, slab has a rectangular cross section. And slabs are rolled into plates and sheets. Billets have square cross sections which are uh, smaller than that of blooms. And they are also rolled into shapes, such as round rods and bars and shaped rolls. Now if, you go, if we go back to the figure, it will make more sense. So let's go back. Here we see the slab, rectangular cross section, which is uh, rolled into plates and sheets. And we see the billet. billet is the square cross section but smaller than blooms and here is the bloom it also has a square cross section but bigger than billets and these products are obtained right after the ingots are or it, it can come from also continuous casting casting uh, they are hot rolled and after hot rolling these products are formed the slab lid and the bloom so after that they go through cold rolling and we obtain for example from the shaping of the bloom we obtain rods, rods, wires, they are shaped and for the billet we obtained wires, bars, uh, seamless pipe and from the slab as we said we obtain plates. Okay, we can go back to our uh, slide where we left. So here is how we start this process, right? The ingots. Remember, the ingots are casted uh, metals and in the shape of the rectangular cross sections. And this ingots basically will, due to its, uh, the process of casting, they will have uh, non-uniform grains. We can see that as we do the hot rolling, uh, the grain structure is changing and we are doing the hot rolling at above the crystallization temperature. Therefore, as the grain structure is deforming, it is also recrystallizing. So we are also forming small and uniform grains, which are improving the strength and the ductility of the material. So it will, it's going to help us to do further cold rolling.
So the surface of blooms, billets, and slabs, because we are working at high temperatures, there are surface uh, defects in the structures such as the formation of oxides because it's high temperature it's making material susceptible to oxidation so those uh, extra uh, scales on the surface we need to remove them before we go do the cold rolling so how can we remove those oxides and oxide surfaces the heavy scale how can we remove these so uh, with a with a uh, process called conditioning so conditioning means you apply some techniques to remove that to make that surface better before the cold working to remove the defects and smoothen the surface so how do we do that by a torch um, which removes that uh, scale and and also you can do grinding grinding can also remove the surface uh, scale and also you can do acid etching so acid it's going to eat eat away the surface so it's called also pickling so that these techniques are possible for us to be able to remove this oxide layer from the surface of the hot roll blooms billets and slabs and condition them basically prepare them for the cold rolling so after that we do the cold rolling of course as the name implies it's gonna happen at room temperature cold rolling unlike hot rolling produces better surface finish And now we know that when we actually deform the material, which what we are doing with cold rolling, we are enhancing the strength of the material because we are doing strain hardening. Uh, sometimes the flat rolling operation can be done uh, in, with two or more metals roll together this will increase the productivity one example is aluminum foil which actually roll in two layers and the top of and the top will be so top and bottom will be in contact with the roll so think about we have the rolls and two is rolled at the same time so of course the foil to foil side which the aluminum foils are touching each other this side right you see this side that is gonna this side this is gonna have a more matte finish whereas the foil and roll side this side will have a shiny finish here the reason for that is because rolls are polished so they have a very smooth surface what type of defects we observe in rolled plates and sheets so defects can be on the surface or they can be inside the material of course we don't want them they are not desirable because they can affect first the surface appearance and of course also the properties like strength formability because we can keep forming the same material right keep reducing the uh, height reducing the um, thickness so therefore we don't want uh, defects so surface defects uh, can be uh, surface defects can be scale rust scratches pits cracks usually they are caused by inclusion in impurities 
that were originally in the cast material. And they can also be introduced uh, during the preparation of the materials and during the rolling operation itself. So let's see what type of defects we have. So the first one is called wavy, def wavy edges. Wavy edges on sheet. This is due to roll bending. Remember, because the roll is bended, the strip becomes thinner at the edges compared to its center. And this will create the defect what we call wavy edges. because the edges will elongate more than the material at the center and the edges edges will buckle like the shown here okay the second type of defect is cracking so the cracking can happen because the material has low ductility at the rolling temperature. There can be two types, zipper cracks, like shown here, center of the strip, or edge cracks, like this one. So uh, we need to remove these if we're going to continue working on these materials and improve the quality of the product. We need to remove those uh, defects. So they can be removed with certain uh, secondary operations. We're going to see in the future chapters. So the other one is alligatoring. So this is due to the presence of defects in the original cast material. So if you look at uh, it, you see why it's called alligatoring, right? Because it looks like the alligator is opening uh, his mouth. So other things that we that are important for rolling and then we need to learn about are residual stresses so because of non-uniform deformation of the material within the roll gap residual stresses can develop in rolled plates and sheets so if we look at here we can see these uh, residual stresses so small diameter rolls like this one so they tend to plastically deform the metal to a higher degree at its surfaces than its bulk. So on the other hand, the large diameter rolls, like shown in image B, they uh, tend to deform the bulk more than its surfaces, which are due to the frictional uh, forces that are at the surface, contact surface. So residual stresses, we have learned about it, can be beneficial or harmful uh, depending on whether the stress is tensile or compressive. So if there, there are tensile residual stresses, uh, they can uh, be large enough to cause the component uh, to experience distortion or cracking. And it also makes them susceptible to stress corrosion cracking. Uh, compressive stresses, if they are residual stresses, then they, they can be helpful because people actually want to intentionally introduce compressive stresses because they will reduce the effects of the uh, applied tensile stresses to the part. So I in many cases uh, to increase the fatigue strength what people are doing is introducing compressive stresses so it will eliminate some of the effect of tension that is applied to the material and reduce the chance of 
uh, fatigue failure and stress corrosion cracking. So in terms of the surface roughness obtained after rolling, the cold rolling can produce a very fine surface finish. But we learned that hot rolling is not like that because of making material susceptible to oxidation. And therefore, uh, your part after cold working may not require additional finishing operation to actually obtain a fine surface finish because you are already obtaining after the process. So hot rolling and sand casting, they produce the same range of surface roughness, which can some give you some idea of how hot rolling is actually uh, not providing you a good surface finish. So we have seen this. Uh, roll setup how the rolls can be arranged so we said two high mill uh, which is used for uh, hot rolling during the initial breakdown three high mill here the material movement through the rolls is reversed after each pass and four high mill here small diameter rolls are used to lower the roll forces thus lower the power requirements and also the also another good thing about small rolls is they can easily be replaced at uh, much lower costs and small rolls deflect more under the forces therefore they are being supported by larger rolls as we have seen in the images and in tandem rolling, the strip is rolled through a number of stands in one pass. And the thickness is reduced with each pass. What type of materials are used in the construction of rolls? Cast iron, cast steel, tungsten carbide. So the material uh, basically needs to have a good strength and resistance to wear it. It is also important not to use the same rolls for hot and cold rolling at the same time because they will expose the material to thermal cycling uh, and uh, therefore the material if it doesn't have a good thermal shock resistance it can crack. Here we are seeing an actual image of a rolling mill and we have the mill stands and with uh, operator controls on the sides and I also suggest you guys please take a look at the video links uh, to see this process um, and in actually how it looks like. So here it is the tandem rolling uh, operation image is given to us which we have learned basically the strip is rolled through a number of stands and it gets thinner as e e with each pass. So let's see various other rolling processes. Like we have seen flat rolling until now and then we're gonna see shape rolling and then some specific uh, rolling process processes in the shape rolling straight long structural shapes such as channels I beams railroad rails solid bars they can be formed by shape rolling it is also called profile rolling roll forging or cross rolling 
so we haven't seen forging but think about hammering okay so you are doing rolling and hammering at the same time so the cross section of a round bar is shaped by passing it through a pair of rolls with a specifically profiled grooves like it is shown in the image if you look at the figure we are seeing two examples of roll forging process tapered shafts table knives uh, uh, hand tools they are shaped with this technique and this technique can also be used as a preliminary forming operation to uh, forging itself. So we are seeing in this figure the steps in the shape rolling of an I-beam. So we cannot directly go from an ingot to an I-beam shape. So the, there has to be a series of rolling processes to achieve that uh, shape, the I-beam cross-sectional shape. So first is blooming rolls. As you can see, then goes to edging rolls. So different types of rolls with different types of grooves, uh, which stage by stage giving the shape of an I beam. Then you use horizontal together with horizontal uh, rolls. You use vertical rolls. So at the end, in stage three, we are getting closer to an I beam shape, as you can see and continue with edging rolls the edging rolls are changing the edges and then we are seeing at the end with the use of vertical and horizontal rolls we are able to obtain that i-beam shape so you can see a series of different type of rolls with different types of grooves uh, specifically designed for this purpose So screw rolling. So this technique is typically used for making ball bearings. What happens there is a round wire or rod that is fed into the roll gap and by the action of the rotating rolls uh, the balls are created. There are other techniques to pr produce the steel balls. As you can see in the image B, uh, there is the cylindrical blank that is put in between the dies in the shape of a ball. And then, of course, it is pressed. And this way, balls can be made. And this will require further grounding and polishing operations because of the formation of flash, as you can see. Another special type of rolling is ring rolling. Here a thick ring is expanded into a larger diameter and thinner ring. Basically the ring shaped blank is placed between two rolls as you can see in the figure. And one of which is driven while the other is idle by bringing the rolls together closer together as they rotate we are achieving the reduction in the thickness of the ring so because the volume has to remain constant when we achieve reduction uh, in the thickness, this will result in an increase in diameter. As you can see in the images, various cross sections can be ring rolled using shaped rolls as we see in B, C, D images.
This technique is used for large rings for rockets and turbines, ball bearings and roller bearing races, and reinforcing rings for pipes. Well, compared to other uh, processing techniques that are capable of producing the same part, the advantage here is we have short production times, close dimensional tolerances, and favorable grain flow in the product, thus enhancing the strength it's in desired direction. So this is a cold uh, thread rolling is a cold forming process which by which straight or tapered threads are formed on round rods. So as you can see there are different ways to do that. So in the image A we are seeing reciprocating flat dies to produce a threaded fastener. The same fastener can be produced if you have in as in the image B two roll dies and as image C the same um, fastener can be produced with using a rotating die and a stationary die and in image D we are seeing different types of thread rolled parts so these are economical and the production rates are high so here we are seeing uh, in image A features of a machine or rolled thread so we are comparing if we just uh, machine the thread or we just roll the thread which one is better so as you can see the grain flow in machined and rolled threads so unlike machining which cuts through the grains of the metal like we are seeing here the rolling threads imparts improved strength because of the cold working and favorable grain flow so because you are doing cold working you are increasing the strength of the material and the grain structure also supports that strength because you are not just cutting through the grains okay so rotary tube piercing as you can see in the image a when a, when a material is subjected to compressive forces, the tensile stresses are developed at its center. We have seen that. So, as we keep uh, exposing the material to compressive stresses, there will be a cavity developed at the center, as you can see, due to the presence of this tension, and it will begin to grow. So, by the help of this idea, what we can do, you, we can use the, in the rolling process where the compressive stresses are applied to the material, we can use an internal mandrel to assist the operation by expanding the hole and sizing the inside diameter of the tube, as you see in the image C. The diameter or thickness of pipes and tubing, this can be reduced by tube rolling, which utilizes shaped rolls arranged in various configurations, as you can see in the illustrations here. In this case, we can use an internal mandrel or not. It's not necessary. So we are seeing if we have a fixed manual how this uh, tube rolling process looks like and in image B uh, with a floating manual going through the part work piece as you can see and C is without and in the image D Pilger rolling over a mandrel and a pair of shaped rolls. So, Pilger roll is 
uh, achieves a reduction in diameter and wall thickness of a metal tube in one step. So this is it in this chapter. In conclusion, what we have learned, we learned the rolling process. It is the reduction of the thickness and we have flat rolling and shape rolling and there are some other specific type of rolling processes we learn we have learned and it is initially carried out at elevated temperatures and then cold uh, at room temperatures what we called cold rolling Spreading, bending, flattening, these were the important considerations to control the dimensional accuracy of the roll material. And there were rolling, rolling mill configurations like 2 high, 3 high, 4 high. And um, we have learned about uh, different types of defects that can form in a roll material so next uh, what we're gonna learn is we're gonna learn about forging again a forming and shaping process